Now, how would you determine the thickness of the wire? Any suggestions? What would you use? Would you use a, a ruler like this to measure uh, the thickness of the wire? No. Why? Well, the smallest division in uh, the ruler is one millimeter. Okay. And um, the thickness of the wire is about one millimeter too. So uh, your error in your measurement would probably be almost as large as the actual thickness of the wire that you measured, right? So the measurement that you have using a ruler um, uh, wouldn't be that accurate, right? So what other instrument that you have used in a previous lab could you use to get a much more precise reading? A uh, vernier caliper, right? Yeah, a vernier caliper. Uh, vernier calipers allow you to measure at least 10 times smaller than with the ruler alone, right? But even uh, 10 times smaller, you know, like to a tenth of a millimeter, and if this wire is a few tenths of a millimeter thick, it's still, you know, uh, still not that, that precise, right? So we are going to be using another instrument called a micrometer, okay? Uh, a micrometer, like this device over here, allows us to measure at least 100 times smaller than you can with a ruler, okay? To one one hundredth of a millimeter, okay? Now, um, does everyone know how a micrometer works? Yeah? Okay. I see a few uh, people that uh, Okay. So, um, I'll explain how this micrometer works. What I'll do is um, I'll place it on the table, if you want to come a little bit closer, and um, I don't have a big micrometer, so you notice how there is um, a screw, and as I turn the screw, the opening on the micrometer gets larger. Can everyone see that? Okay. And if I go the other way, the opening gets smaller, right? Okay. Now, someone clever had to figure out a way, how can you use a, a precision screw to actually allow you to measure to one one hundredth of a millimeter? So he came up, or she came up, with this idea of a micrometer, okay, which has graduations on the sleeve, on the sleeve that turns with the screw, okay? Now, if I close the micrometer screw all, 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 all the way, you'll notice that there's graduations all around the sleeve here, right? How many graduations are there? There's uh, 100 graduations on this micrometer, okay? Now, you see the zero? lines up with this line here on the micrometer, okay? So what does that tell us? The opening right now of the micrometer is zero. Now look very carefully. If I rotate the sleeve, 10 divisions have gone by, 20 divisions, 30 divisions. If I keep turning, 100 divisions will have passed by. And if you look carefully here, you see now two vertical lines. You see the two vertical lines? Um, that tells us that um, the micrometer screw has advanced exactly one millimeter. Okay, so the opening here is exactly one millimeter. If I rotate it another complete turn, so another 100 divisions go by, like right here, um, now you see two vertical uh, lines, right? That tells us now that the opening here is two millimeters. If I turn it to this point, so it's... 3, 3, 33 divisions on the sleeve. What is the opening of the micrometer now? Uh, uh, 2 point 33 what? Uh, Millimeters, right? Millimeter. Exactly, yeah. So you see the ingenious uh, way of how you can use a precision screw that's graduated to allow you to measure to the nearest 1 one hundredth of a millimeter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the opening here is 1 one hundredth of a millimeter. Now, you measure the thickness of the wire, okay, and when you do the calculations that, it, um, that will allow you to determine what the shear modulus is for this particular setup, um, you have to remember it uses the radius. So when you measure this uh, thickness of the wire, make sure you divide by two, otherwise your results will be way off, okay, okay, because the radius is half the diameter. So. Um, um, I think that's about it in, in a nutshell for this part of the experiment. Uh, any questions about um, the procedure without having me to do the entire lab for you? Um, everything is pretty straightforward? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take a, a brief pause and I'll uh, head over to this setup that we have on uh, against the wall. Okay.
So what I will do now is quickly uh, set up uh, this apparatus to show you how uh, to use it properly, but also explain how it works, okay? Can everyone see that there's a, a hanging hook at the end of the wire? And um, this apparatus here pivots at this point here. So when we apply a mass at the end of the hook here, it will be applying a force on the wire only because it pivots at this point. This part is actually fixed in space, okay? Now, for those of you that are close by, you'll notice that there's a horizontal platform here. Now, we want this horizontal platform to be perfectly horizontal. So what do we do? There's a little screw attached to one end of the platform, and there's a little bubble level attached to the platform itself. So we twist the screw back and forth, back and forth, until the bubble in the bubble level is centered. Okay. Once that bubble in the bubble level is centered, that means that the platform that it's mounted on is perfectly horizontal and perpendicular to the hanging wire. Now, this uh, screw also has a disc on it with 100 divisions. What this screw is, is a micrometer itself. So, we record what this um, um, uh, value is on the disc, and we set it to be equal to zero. That's our starting point. Okay. Then we take our first of uh, five equal masses. These are 200 grams each. We apply the mass to the end of the hook. So what do you think will happen to the wire? It'll stretch, right? So the wire, because there's a force being applied on it, will make this platform go like this, because um, uh, the platform is attached also to the wire, right? And as the wire stretches, the platform will go like this, right? So um, what do you do next with the applied mass? You re-level the platform by turning this screw until the bubble is centered again a second time. Okay. Now, the difference in the two readings on this graduated scale, let's say it's uh, seven divisions, since there's 100 divisions um, on the disc, okay, um, that means that uh, when we brought it back to the original conditions, it has stretched f uh, seven divisions or seven one hundredths of a millimeter. Does that make sense? Okay, so, um, so, uh, so basically, uh, you continue doing this by adding an additional slotted mass of 200 grams. The wire will get pulled because uh, the apparatus pivots at this point. This uh, point is fixed in space. Um, so now this platform is uh, like this. It's uh, exaggerated, of course, right? So what you do is uh, you turn the micrometer screw again a second time until you level it again. And you notice what the new reading is. And the difference between the new reading and the uh, initial reading is the amount that the, the, uh, uh, the wire has stretched by applying, uh, in this case, um, a total of 400 grams, 200 grams times two. Does that make sense? And um, you continue to add masses, take your uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, values, table of values, and you go to the computer over here where you're going to run a program called um, uh, MathCAD. You open a file called uh, Elasticity, you enter your data points, and this time, Instead of uh, graphing things manually, the computer program will um, produce a graph and using the least squares method, a technique that you used in a pre-lab exercise to answer one of the pre-lab questions, uh, it'll actually fit um, a line of best fit to the data, okay? And it'll do pretty well all the calculations that you need, uh, you know, and you'll have a nice printout uh, to staple to your lab report and take home with you and, and impress your siblings uh, on what you did uh, in the lab, okay?